Rondo. Rondo. <laughs> Jamon Ariel Hill is my birth name. Uh, I write poems. Damn good poems. And uh, <laughs> most of y'all don't know who I am, but I want to go ahead and thank y'all because last year I came up on the stage and for the first time in my life performed poems for people. Woo! Last week, I was in D.C. at the Individual World Poetry Slam. Woo! And that would not have been possible if it weren't for Gorilla Theater. Hell yeah! yeah. Awkward. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so um, here's my favorite poem ever. It's called A Poem About Growing Up and Going to School and Pretty Much Life Until Now. <laughs> Have you ever walked through winter to build roses out of grass? <clears throat> through fingers that extended seasons and knuckles that bruised at the first sign of adversity? Thumbs that were opposable but would bend backwards as if double-jointed to join hands with majority? A pinky in need of a savior, always afraid of coming up short? Who looked to the middle finger, battered and overused while busy overcompensating for a ring finger destined to remain alone, leaving one finger left so busy pointing towards stifled imagination that he simply handed over his dreams to his third grade teacher and learned to palm a basketball instead. Recess became work and school became break time as the ball pounded the pavement like the body hitting the windshield of a car heading north in search of a brighter tomorrow, traveling so fast that it forgot its roots. See, sixth grade was never my specialty. As a new kid, I wandered the hallway shell-shocked by bombshells bombarding me, batting eyelashes with slugging percentages as high as Barry Bonds. My nervousness was a steroid as I stared into the gateways of a privilege they possessed, not knowing that as the only black boy in school, I would be hunted. Like an antelope who grew up with eagles, only to come of age and learn he'd never fly. So I daydreamed wings and soared through class with flying colors. I wonder if they smiled because of my flying colors or because I was flying colored. See my cram box. My cram box was always used up as I tried to fill in the whites of their eyes with a shade of acceptance. And the only colors that worked were pigskin and hardwood, so I became the star athlete and only read books at bedtime. The court became my sanctuary and I threw up prayers that were always answered. I passed scriptures and laid up offerings till I learned to dunk baptism to my tattered choir robe. Stained in a sweat only earned after the performance at the expense of a white crowd. Little did I know, I was the modern day man bingo. Excuse me, but this basketball is the only thing keeping me off this minimum wage plantation. This nine to five to support my five to nine kids, ages one through four, who have hands like boxes, ready to square off with the society that told them they were never good enough to try angles. I entered high school as confused as a caveman, taking a seventh grade geometry test. I was introduced to a concept of racism that can't be covered in a chapter book, where smiles and laughter become smile and slaughter. They grinned as they twisted the knife in my back that shattered like a weak backboard. I was never taught to bank in my shot at life. They wouldn't give us money unless they knew we let it sift through our fingers as easily as glitter shines on a kindergarten project, screaming innocence with a delicate frontal face. In the moment our dreams became cemented in sleep, I awoke, clinging to eyelids that allowed me to live a life built on Nikes and Spalding. Reality tugged at my bed sheets as I entered college, ready to pick these cotton fields they call class. At first, my surroundings seemed simple enough, but as slow the summer comes to a schoolboy, my courses became cells. My student ID was my serial number and my teachers. Masters of assimilation or appropriation, they assembled an army of free thinkers who used their brains as weapons and touted untold histories like hand grenades, ready to chop bombs on the world. We thought we were being prepared for the unknown. We were actually being prepared for the unspoken. 
Thank you. November 2014, Dove finally at peace. Funeral service takes unfortunate turn when Dove launched into the air by pastor, plummeted straight into the ground with a thud after suffering a heart attack. <laughs> a poem. <laughs> I should have known by the tan suit, Stevie Harvey fit, wavering voice that this deacon was gonna do some dumb shit. <laughs> I should have known by the innocent white dove trapped inside his hand that the plan would be poorly executed. Something about black people at a funeral. But before I could realize the irony of the situation, the deacon said, Oh, if I had wings like this dove. <laughs> point I realized the dove was going to be the butt end of the joke here. <laughs> he had been suffering under the deacon's grasp for a while now, looking for a chance to breathe, the melody of his wings stifled by the imagination of what could be. The deacon was so sure the dove would fly, he flung him hard enough as if he hadn't just crippled it with captivity, and I believed him, but before I could realize the irony of the situation, the dove was soaring. <laughs> and for only a second. Propelled <laughs> by the deacon's will the way it tore through the sky, you would have forgotten that it didn't know how to use its wings. That his heartbeat was lost via a heart attack. That the trauma left a bruise the size of existence. That the dove had had hope. And I raised my hands into the air and wished for wings like the dove. I didn't mind that the Mississippi heat left stains in my pits because my temperament matched the temperature. See, I wanted to fly high because I learned everything's fair and height break free and let the prison cell see us go up. But before I could realize the irony of the situation, the dove went from the flyaway portion of the scripture and quickly began to be at rest. <laughs> Surprise and disappointment crept into the souls of the crowd as the dove plummeted towards reality. And one who I presume was the most logical in the group said, he didn't fly. <laughs> confused because what the deacon had said sounded great figuratively, but literally it sucked. The flight was as short as the scripture as the white dove lay there, a spectacle for the black crowd, and when I realized no one was going to pick up the dead white dove, I realized how clever the cameraman was. He managed to shoot the entire scene Negative. That's all I got. <laughs> 